Hello everyone, my name is Selgi Gang from Korea. During this course, I've faced very difficult problems and I've still tried to overcome this problem. I want to share my trouble, why this problem is important for me and all of us, and how to deal with it. My biggest problem on this course, I've trouble, I have trouble in reading efficiently and critically. Actually, I'm not used to practice analysis or summary in the reading structure. However, I've been required reading a lot, so I had to read a wide range of sources for this assessment for five weeks. As I spent too much time in reading sources before writing process, I was troubled in allocating my time to the next steps, such as writing draft, review, and so on. It seemed like time-consuming process, so I thought I need to read more efficiently. Moreover, another difficult problem was to read critically. I've not learned specifically about reading structure, logical analysis, and thinking critically. However, almost all sources for my assessment required critical thought and practices for analysis of the structure. So I needed the strategy of reading critically. And now let's think about the reason why the reading efficiently and critically is so important and why it is useful for me or us. First of all, Improving efficient reading skill will reduce the time and effectively allocate my time. It means that I can save more time to focus on my writing process and complete my essay on time. Also, these reading skills are really important methods to get necessary information and figure out other author's arguments or key points with a logical and critical thinking. Although learning these reading skills might be not easy, we have to practice reading efficiently, critically, and analytically. The approach to reading skills and critical reading strategy will be necessary. And then, how I have overcame these problems and I've, what I've learned from this. I've tried to overcome a lack of the reading skills by spending more time in practice for reading, by using a variety of methods. Above all, Learning everyday online lectures, tutoring, seminars, and assessments supported by this course has gradually increased my reading skills because I was able to practice readings consistently on a daily basis. Moreover, I've used other materials and sources whenever more advices and tips are needed. I've found them from other universities, YouTube videos, and related online sources. These sources are helped me a lot. What I've learned from this was some practical strategies to develop these reading skills. So let's move on to the reading strategies. First, thinking about the structure. I've consciously asked myself, what is the author actually trying to say? What questions are they answering? What hypotheses are they testing? Second, analyzing the arguments. I've learned argument is a set of ideas that support a main point, so I've always tried to analyze the argument. Also, for analyzing the argument, I need to find accurate and relevant evaluations and evidence. I've also asked myself and examined the information carefully. What is the point? Is it a sufficient evidence? Or is it a relevant evidence? To be a critical reader, we know sometimes it only sounds good. We still need to ask questions to see if any piece of information truly supports the main point. Even when it appears there's good information to support the key point, we should always evaluate that evidence. Third, distinguishing facts from opinions. Lastly, I've learned finding object information that can be verified depends on me. When something's presented as fact, does it mean it is true? Actually, it is up to me to examine the information carefully. When information presented as a fact, it is verifiable and objective based on statistics, data, or observations. It could be right, wrong, or misreading. It is also up to me to verify the evidence. These three outcomes could be helpful to improve my reading skills and read efficiently and critically for my master's degree. 
And now let's move on to My City presentations. I've thought about what My City sustainability is and how it impacts on My City. Will hydrogen cars create a greener future for My City, Seoul? Actually, Seoul is an overcrowded area with a lot of cars and people. Every day, many commuters use their own cars, which emit harmful gas emissions on the road. If this situation is still going on, my city will become more and more polluted. And finally, ecosystem in the city cannot be sustainable. However, fortunately, Seoul has tried to make a variety of policies to create a greener city for a sustainable ecosystem and encourage citizens to use hydrogen cars. Seoul was designated as a city of green mobility, called it Green New Deal. The mayor has invested 1.6 billion pounds to make Seoul become a greener city until 2022. Moreover, the mayor has also announced new policies related to hydrogen cars. Look at this policy. Um, they are creating a city with zero carbon emissions until 2050, changing all cars in Seoul to eco-friendly cars, and citizens who want to buy hydrogen cars will receive subsidies from Seoul. And what short-term and long-term impacts will this have? In a short-term impact, Using hydrogen cars will directly influence on decreasing air pollutions as these cars emit only water into the air and purify fine dust. Consequently, it can help citizens to breathe much cleaner air and increase the quality of life. Also, driving these cars is very quiet, so the noise of the city can be reduced. In a long-term impact, residents in sustainable city can coexist Coexist consistently with other species, which makes ecosystem more abundant, harmonious, valuable, and healthier. It can make a better city to live together. Moreover, using hydrogen cars for a long time reduces not only local emissions, but global emissions. It is very important impact because environmental protection is a duty for all of us. As a result, my city may need much greener cars to really make my city cleaner, wealthier, and sustainable. Thanks for listening my presentation.